I know that to a lot of people, making a homemade CNC can feel like opening up a can of worms. There's a million different methods of doing it, sometimes the method of achieving it can be a bit ambiguous, maybe the instructions are vague, in a different language, or non-existent. In this video I'll try and shed some light on the method that I've done in the past to build a budget CNC, and it's always worked for me. For the purpose of this video, I'll be CNCing my dividing head, but the same method can be used to CNC a lathe or a mill, and those are things that I've done in the past. The real differences between them are just slight tweaks in the software and how many stepper motors you need to run for how many axes you need to drive. If you watched the previous video, you'll remember that I made a mount so I could attach the stepper motor to the dividing head. If you need to CNC a mill or a lathe, you'll probably have to make your own mounts, or there are some that you can buy. At least depending on what type of mill or lathe you have. For this build, I'm going to be using NEMA 23 sized stepper motors. You can use servos, but that's a different setup, and it's a lot cheaper and easier to work with steppers. Now the thing that makes steppers really useful for a CNC build, is the shaft can be precisely moved. On most stepper motors, you can turn the shaft in 1.8 degree increments, and 360 degrees divided by 1.8 is 200 steps per revolution. To put it simply, there are 200 movements of 1.8 degrees per revolution, and controlling how it moves and how many steps it moves will give us our CNC machine. Now to control each stepper motor, it's going to need its own control driver. There are lots to choose from, but I've been using these TB6600 drivers, and I've never had much issue with them. The reason why I bought them is because they were inexpensive. I bought them for about 23 bucks when I bought them, but they sell them for about 15 to 20 bucks nowadays. And to give some context, you can buy some name brand ones for about 100 bucks or more. Of course, if you want to do some precise 4-axis milling, of course don't use these, but on a DIY home build, these work just fine, at least in my experience. Now the job of the driver is to power the stepper motor and take the commands from the computer and turn that into pulses for the stepper motor. One pulse will tell the motor to step 1.8 degrees. So 200 pulses will give us one complete turn of the stepper motor. Now there is a bit of wiring that needs to be done, but don't worry about that for the moment, it's not that difficult. As well as the controllers, you'll also need a breakout board of some kind. The control boards don't hook up to the computer directly, they go through a breakout board. Speaking of which, there are a lot to choose from. I've always preferred to use one that connects to a PC. However, there are some that work with Gerbil Shields and Arduinos, and those are very popular, but it's not something that I wanted to get into, so I haven't touched that too much. If you want to do that, I'm sure there are a lot better videos out there, more suited to that type of work. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using this cheap 5-axis breakout board, and I think this one only cost me about 10 bucks. I've never had a problem with this one, although you do need a computer that has a 25-pin parallel port. There are breakout boards out there that use USB or Ethernet connections instead of a parallel port, and i found, unless you get the premium ones, the performance of those ones isn't that great. Overall, this inexpensive one has worked for me. I would recommend sticking to only three axes, anything more and it starts to lose steps. The final thing that you'll need is a DC power supply. As sketchy as these things look, they do work. This one here is 24 volts and 100 watts. So let's get this thing wired up, and the wiring is a bit of a mess, but it is pretty simple. So let's go from the bottom up. The ground and VCC goes to the DC power supply. The next four wires are for the stepper motor connections. There are stepper motors out there with six or eight wires, but most ones should have four. Now chances are, if you have bought the stepper motors new, it will come with an instruction booklet, which tells you which wires are pairs. However, if you don't have that, an easy way to find out which wires are pairs is to just short out two wires and see if the shaft becomes difficult to turn. I've shorted out two wires and the shaft is still pretty easy to turn. 
However, when I short out a different pair of wires, it's noticeably harder. So these two are a pair. And by pair, I mean they're connected to the same coil. So from all this, we can deduce that the wires blue and red and wires black and green are pairs. And we can wire them into the control board. And don't worry too much about which one's positive or negative at the moment. If there's no movement when it comes time to test them, we'll simply switch the polarity of one pair and that should fix everything. Next, we need to wire in the control signals. And this is the setup that works for this board. So direction plus 5 volts gets shorted with pulse 5 volts and connect them with a wire. Then connect a wire that goes from pulse 5 volts and connect it to one of the end connections on the breakout board that's labelled plus 5 volts power. Typically all the labelling is going to be on the bottom of the breakout board. Next, take a wire from the negative direction and connect it to the direction port on the breakout board. And do the same for pulse negative 2. On the board, it should be labelled CLK. Now this is my A axis, so I wire it to the A axis port, although on a mill, you'd want to be using X, Y and Z. And remember to note which wires go to which pins associated on the board. That'll become important later. For the A axis on my board, that'll be pin 8 and 9. And notably, both enable ports will be left unused. Finally, let's set the dip switches. My stepper motor is rated to 3 amps continuous current, so I'll set the switches to the off on off position. For micro stepping, I've set it to 1 or 200 pulses per rev. For the purpose of this video, don't worry too much about micro stepping. Next, let's hook the breakout board to the computer. For CNC work, I have a dedicated CNC computer. I picked it up for about 10 bucks a few years ago. It's from 2005-2006. It uses DDR1 RAM and it has an old ancient ATI chipset. So this computer is pretty much ancient. However, it does have a parallel port, which is all that I wanted. In my time doing CNC stuff, I've always found using a PC with a proper parallel port to be the best option. I've used several of those powered parallel to USB connections, and they've never worked that well. Even on a moderately high-end CNC machine, those adapters just don't work that well, at least in my experience. You can get PCI expansion cards with parallel ports, which do work, but I was able to get this whole computer and a monitor for about a quarter of the cost. I'll hook up the parallel port, though I'll also need to hook up this USB port too. All it does is provide the 5 volt power for the board. In terms of software, there's a range to choose from, and everyone does have their favourites. I've used Linux CNC in the past, which is free, but it just never suited me, although a lot of people love it. For CNC work, I've always gone with Mark III. There is a free version that lets you run 300 lines of G-code, and anything more, you'll need to get a license. I've used Mark III on and off for about 7 years now, and whilst I'm no expert in using it, it has all the functions that I need, and I'm pretty happy with it. So what we need to do is set it up. What we'll do first is configure the ports and pins. And this is what works for me. For this board, you'll want to select the kernel speed to be 35,000 Hz. In the motor output tab, we'll need to configure the pins. On a mill, you'll want to enable axis X, Y and Z. And on a lathe, it'll just be axis X and Z. But for me, I'm only using an A axis, so I'll tick the A axis. Next, we'll enter the associated pin on the breakout board. For me, direction is pin 9 and step is pin 8. We'll also check the low active options. You want the port for the step and direction to be port 1. In the output signals tab, enable 1 and set that to port 1 and pin 14. In output 1, also enable that and put it to port 1 and pin 17. Finally, we'll go to motor tuning and setup. The velocity and acceleration can be done later and it can be dependent on your individual stepper motor, but the most important thing to do 
is the steps per, and that's steps per unit. On a milling machine, that's probably going to be steps per millimeter, or I guess steps per inch. When I'm using my CNC lathe, it's connected to a 1mm pitch lead screw, so that would be 200 steps per millimeter. For me, I'm working out how many steps it is per degree. The dividing head uses a 40 to 1 worm gear, so every rotation of the hand wheel moves it 9 degrees. There are 200 steps per turn, so 200 divided by 9 is 22 recurring. So there's 22.2 steps per degree moved. With that done, I'll press tab on the keyboard to bring up the job tab. And if everything now works out, I'll press reset and I should be able to jog the dividing head. I'll enter in 10 and that should jog it 10 degrees. And that looks to be close enough to 10. At this point on a mill or a lathe, you'd probably want to set it up with some G-code in order to cut something. You can get G-code using Fusion 360 or any other CAM software. As for me though, I have some gears to make. And with that, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.